هاي هنا أنا جاي تنتظروني الأكل أكو بلاش وأكو بفلوس هنا يلونون وجوه أطفال هاي مثلا بفلوس فلهذا الناس عليها كلش قليلة وهذيك مبين عليها ببلاش يعني كل الناس متجمعة هناك هاي هنا تشوف اللي يريد You'll be very surprised to learn what lives around Braybrook and around Maribyrnong. Now, there's mammals, there's birds, there's reptiles, and every animal has a job to do. Your mummy and dad's have got different jobs, haven't they? So do the animals. Now, the first creature coming out today, oh, by the way, we're animals, aren't we? I've had him for a very, very long time. Now, if you've seen Poke at his tongue today, he's not being rude or cheeky. Do you know what he's doing? He is sensing. He's smelling you. And you can tell that he's a boy. He's got bright red eyes. Now, I need someone to come out the front today to help me hold a beautiful blotch blue tongue lizard. Young lady, would you like to come out the front? What's your name? Bridget. Now, Bridget's going to come over here, and Mum and Dad are going to get a photograph of you. But remember, this is a pet lizard. If you see a wild lizard running along the Meribyrnong bike track, do you touch them? No. Leave them alone. Let them do their job. Let them eat up all and dogs. Who's got a pet pussy cat here today? Have you got a cat? Now, best up, own up for me. Please, can you lock them up at night time? Don't let them run around the daytime. Keep them inside. Don't let them run around. Hit of his snout. He's a quarter short necked turtle, not a tortoise. Does anyone know the difference? Tortoises live on the land, and turtles are aquatic. They live in the river or in the ocean. Now, I've seen many, many, many of these turtles sunbaking on the snags along the Meribyrnong River. It's a kayak all the way up from uh, Essendon Rowing Club. And this turtle here, look at his nose. His schnoz is right on the tip of his head. And he can stick his nose out of the water. Birds can't see him like a snorkel. Now, the top part of his shell, that's called his carapace. Can you feel your backbone? Can you feel your spine? Have you got one? Some of us don't these days. Feel your rib bones, give him a bit of a tickle. There his ribs stuck together underneath. So he's got no bills, no rent. He's always on holidays. And see his webbed feet he's got. See his paddling feet? Swim in the Meribyrnong River. Now, next time you, you have to rescue one, pick them up from behind and hand on top, kind of like a cheeseburger, okay? But don't eat him because your teeth will fall out. Put your hand on top. And that's it, got it? Give him a big clap, well done. Uh, Murray River short neck turtle, they also do live here in the Maribyrnong River. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to put him away, but when I was a kid, I was taught that if you count the scoop scales on his back, that actually tells you how old he is. It's not true, okay? Now I'm going to put him away because the next creature coming out, it's an animal which used to live around the Meribyrnong River. Unfortunately, it's extinct locally. The closest place where you'd find one of these is Mount Dandenong now, and around the back of Warrandyte. It's called a lace monitor for a tree goanna. Wouldn't it be great on National Tree Planting Day, wouldn't it be great if we created more habitat for this lizard and welcome him back around Cranwell Park? Because this lizard coming out now, his name is Godzilla. And he's a threatened species, an endangered species here in Victoria. He's a monitor with two tongues joined together, a bifurcated tongue. And guess what he eats? He eats meat. What are you guys made up of? Meat. meat. Watch your fingers with this chat, okay? I'm getting out, but you might be thinking, well, why do we need goannas in our, in our ecosystem? What do they do for us? This one eats up the tiger snakes and the eastern brown snakes. That's a good job, isn't it? So they keep the balance. I'll get him out, sit very still, and don't worry, I have insurance, okay? Here he comes. Oh, I know this, I know this. You can all touch him today. And 
that's why we're here today celebrating National Tree Planting Day. We're learning about every animal and the jobs that every creature does. Now, sit very still and I'll see how close you can get to you. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to scare you. He might just poke at his tongue and have a sniff of you. Now, what I want you to do today, after I finish my presentation, I'd like to get your mum and dad to get a photograph of you touching all of these animals. So, have a feel of him quickly. It's very tough. It kind of feels like dad's face in the morning before he has a shower. <laughs> that's the that's to deflect the fangs of a venomous snake. Really tough. Why do you think he's got such sharp claws? What are they used for? They're used for climbing up the trees. Now, I need someone to come out the front to help me hold Godzilla, the second largest lizard in Australia. What's your name? Archer, good on you. Archer, you'll be embarrassed when you're older, good on you. Now, now Archer, I'm going to hold his head. Put your hands underneath his... That's it, Archer. Where's Mum? There you go, his dad. Should make assumptions. Archer, put your head up. Look at Daddy. Look like you're having a great time. That's it. Give Archer a clap. Well done, Archer. But listen, boys and girls, the reason why we're here today, we're celebrating biodiversity. We're learning about why we need to create habitat. But don't we live in a good state, Victoria? Aren't we lucky? You don't have to go to the Amazon or Africa to have cool wildlife. Now, I'm going to put him back in here. Notice how he's in his own box. If he wasn't in his own box, guess what he'd do? He'd eat everything else. Now, I'll put him back in here and let him have a snooze. Because the next creature coming out today, it's a type of frog. And he's called a banjo frog. Now, what noise do frogs make? Do you know? Oh, they don't go around. And Vivian. You were here last year, weren't you? What's your name? Luke, do you want to come out the front and help me hold a frog? Don't kiss him. He's not going to turn into a princess, okay? Now, this frog here, she's a bit of a fat so. This frog is a burrowing frog. Now, Luca, if it does jump onto the ground, you're not going to hurt it, okay? We'll just have, have a bit of kneel down and put your hands out flat. If you ever do see a frog in your school sand pit or your back garden, don't pat them with your hands. That can damage their skin. Now, Luca, put your hands together and just cut your hands gently around it like that. You got it? See how it's big eyes patrol. Oh, don't worry. It's good to scare yourself once a day, otherwise you're not leaving. Try again, Luca. Plenty of dirt. And Luca, just like plucking your hands out. He's a banjo frog. Bum, 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 bum. Give Luca a big clap. Well done. Now, Bridget, frogs do a great job. Okay? Now, it is windy today, and we've tripped this bird tape. We've put a bit of sticky tape around its wings so it can't fly off. It doesn't harm the bird, it just stops it from flying off. Now, this bird here, is Gonzo, and Gonzo lives right here in this park. Do you find them along the river red gum uh, forest lining the Meribonong River? Look at this cool bird. Now, I need someone to come out the front today to help me hold a tawny frog now. Remember, their job is to eat all the bugs. And they usually come out at night time. Common night time creatures, not nocturnal. Luca, are you nocturnal? Mum and dad might make a difference, but you're meant to be the opposite. You're meant to be diurnal. Now, I've forgotten your name. Young man, what's your name? Taver. Now, Taver, come out here. We're going to stand underneath here so it's not so windy. Taver's going to put his arm out like a lovely tree that he is. This arm here. And I'm going to say, step up. Keep your head straight. That's it. That's it, Taver. And Taver, that is awesome. Wow. Give Taver a big clap. Well done. That laughs on cue. He laughs because he thinks that I'm his daddy. Now, when kookaburras laugh, they're actually triangulating their territory. They're basically saying, Back off, Archer. Stay out of my territory. Don't eat my food. That's what they're saying. Now, this is the largest kingfisher. You also have the smallest kingfisher in Australia living along the Meribodong River, the Azure kingfisher, the purple one. Now, I'm going to get him out. Um, I'll be very, very careful and very, very quick, but hopefully I can make him laugh. Now, very, very quiet. Come on, Chucky. You ready? Never work with animals and children. I do both. Now, I'll put him back in there, but what's he doing? Is he telling you a bad joke? Ah, uh -uh, what's he doing? He's telling you to back off, stay out of my territory. Hey, listen, if you'd like to uh, welcome kookaburras into your garden or into your schoolyard, wouldn't it be great to put up some nesting boxes up into the trees around Cranwell Park and we can maybe create more habitat, more homes for birds and possums to live in? Now, speaking of possums, 
your cat kills possum for a table. That's why I'm here today, because you know what? Cats should really be locked up and put into a, a cat. Ca I love cats. I'm not a cat hater. I love them. And they don't belong running around at night time, do they? Or in the daytime when we're at work. Now, the next creature. A wild cat. Well, Archer. I'm about to bring up the next creature, and it is a ring-tailed possum. And you have them living right around your environment here today. See all the beautiful manic- I want you to pat a ring-tailed possum. Now, everyone thinks that possums are stinky, horrible things. They eat your fruit at night time. They get up into your roof cavities. But guess what? They were here first, weren't they? And we need possums. You know what they do for us? They cross-pollinate all of the flowers at night time. When they're sucking up the nectar or eating the leaves, they cross-pollinate the flowers creating the seeds. Now, this is one of the few animals in the world that can eat gum leaves. Their guts with good bacteria so they can eat toxic gum leaves. If you ate a gum leaf, you get sick and die. But ring tail possums can eat toxic food. And look at his tail. It's like a monkey's tail, isn't it? And they use their tail to tap on the tree branches with so they don't fall out and land on their nose. Now, I need someone. Someone's feeling extra brave today. I need uh, Madam Butterfly here. Would you like to come out the front? Actually, come. What's your name? Lavinia. Lavinia. Now, Lavinia, come out. Just say, excuse me. Brooke, I'll hold your hand. Here you go. Come through. Now, Lavinia, I'm, I'm going to put him on your hand. And just like this. And I, that's your tree branch, okay? And I'm going to put him here. And he might just climb up on your hand, okay? He got up the other night in my house. And he jumped on my face in my bed. He's, he's very friendly. He knows people. In attached to its wrist to its ankle called a patagium. Can you say patagium? I like the word words. Makes it sound important. But this little possum, it's got very fluffy powder puff like fur along the Maribyrnong River. So, aren't you guys great finding more trees today, more habitat? Can you see all the wattle here, the silver wattle? That's their food. That's their diet. They love smoking the pollen nectar and eating the pollen. They also eat bugs as well. But what a in a great country, all these beautiful creatures for you guys to look after. I need someone like you, young lady. What's your name? Estelle. Estelle's going to come out the front. Don't worry, you can all do this in a minute. That's why I'm busy here me too. We'll get all of these animals out later on for you to touch. Now, Estelle, put your hands out like this. Cup your hands together. We don't have trees. No, this bat. Oh, this is a good one. Now, nocturnal animals are scared of light, but this animal, here's a good word. Remember this next time you play Scrabble. This animal is cathemeral. Female grey-headed flying fox. So, before you go to bed tonight, look up in the night sky. You'll see these flying over your house around Braybrook. So, it looks like a it looks like a flying chihuahua, doesn't it? <laughs> so, boys have got yellow heads. Girls have got a grey, uh, like a reddy, rusty head. And you find these around the Meribadong every night of the year. Are you ready for it? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Now, can you see the patagium, that flap of skin? And can you see all the blood vessels in her, in, in her wing? Now, she doesn't need to flick on the air conditioner on a hot day. She just flaps her wings in the breeze. Now, she flies from the Meribadong River at night time to Geelong, to Bendigo, to Ballarat. And she eats lots of seeds and lots of fruit. Guess what she does? 20 minutes later, she poops it out and she drops seed across the landscape. So that's a good job, isn't it? These animals help revegetate our barren landscape. Now, in Victoria, it's illegal to pat a bat unless you work with them like me, like a zoologist. If you see a bat in your garden, please don't touch. And if you do have fruit trees, can you make sure bats don't get caught up in the fruit netting? Get smaller netting which bats can't get tied up in. Don't you reckon that's a beautiful animal? They live right here around the Meribadong River. You've helped them out today. Good job, people. Why do you do this so She's just listening. Yeah, very inquisitive, very intelligent. And depending which Sunday school you went to, they're actually closely related to human beings. Now, <laughs> now I'm going to put Gizmo away. Gizmo is hand-reared, so she was born and bred at my zoo. She knows people. She was scared. She'd urinate, she'd bite, she'd scratch, and uh, she'd be all sort of stressed out. Now, the next creature coming out, I have... What else have I got to show them? I've got a little snake coming out now. You might be thinking, Chris, I don't want to see a snake. They're scary. They're mean. They're horrible. They're not. Snakes are fantastic animals. And all along the Meribadong River, over summertime and springtime, you find tiger snakes, eastern brown snakes. They sunbake along the bicycle track. But you know what? They help us out, don't they, Lucas? What do they do for us? They eat up all of the mice and the rats, don't they? 
Yeah. Well, listen, Tava, I'm petrified of mice and rats. That's why I love snakes. So don't hurt snakes. Don't pick up a big stick and try and whack them over the head and try and kill them. What do we need to do? Protect them. Walk away. Stand still. Exactly right. Now listen, snakes sit in our bike paths because they're thermoregulating. They don't have warm blood like you and I do. What type of blood do they have? Cold blood. They're ectothermic. So they sit outside in the sun to sunbake. They've got scaly skin, no hair. Now I'm about to bring out this snake. Actually, I'm going to get Adam to get this snake out because I've been touching bats and this snake will eat a bat. It's called a diamond python. Now you don't find this snake right here along the Meribodong. This snake lives in eastern Gippsland. Now, this is just a representative today because we need to appreciate snakes. But listen, this snake's endangered in Victoria because of loss of habitat. Now, this snake, you can tell it's a southerly found snake that's dark in colour. It lives in cool environments. Now, I need someone today to come out the front to help me hold a diamond python, and perhaps even wrap it around their neck. What do you think, young lady? Out you come. What's your name? Anne-Marie. Now, Anne-Marie, is mum and dad in the audience? What, wave goodbye. There you go. <laughs> now, Anne-Marie, we're going to wrap it around your body just gently like that. Put your head back for me. Hands up in the air and poke your tongue out. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Now, this snake doesn't have to go to High Point to buy its clothes. Its old skin peels off like a dirty old snot. Sock, it's been a long day. Anne-Marie, give her a big clap. Well done. And they shed their skin about ten times a year. Did you see those little heat pits along its face? Little lip pits. They hunt at night time, picking up the infrared heat from their warm mammalian prey. Have you heard the word prey before? Not praying in church, but prey, predation, their food. Now, you can touch a diamond python today, the mice and the rats. Now listen, wouldn't it be great if we had a safe area in our garden, or our schoolyard, or our kindergarten yard where we didn't play it? and we let animals live there undisturbed. Now, I'm about to bring out another creature, and the next creature, it's an echidna. Now, you might be thinking, come on, Chris, we don't get echidnas around the Maribyrnong River. You do, in fact. Now, Rosman Road, I've seen them plenty of times when I've gone kayaking up and down the, 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 the Maribyrnong River. I've seen them right here in Cranwell Park. This echidna coming out, it's a mono tree, an egg-laying mammal. What's the other mono tree in which we find living in the Maribyrnong River? A platypus. Now listen, this is Boris. Now, shh, nice and quiet. You can tell he's my son, he's got the same hairdo, hasn't he? Now, now he's got keratinous spiny covering on his body. They're not venomous, they can't, they, they don't have any uh, toxins in them, but they are very prickly for protection from foxes and dogs and cats. You can help out echidnas. When you're walking a dog along the Maribyrnong bike track, what do you walk your dog on? A leash. Now, often these poor old echidnas get run over on the cold freeway on the way back to Mount Macedon. I've seen plenty of dead ones. Listen, when you're driving around, can you slow down? They sit along the sides of the roads, slurping up all the insects where all the water collects. Oh, they do. I've got a zoology degree and everything. The archer. And they live in Papua New Guinea as well, though, don't they, Archer? Now, I need someone at the front. Someone to help me, young lady. At you come. Now, echidnas, when they lay an egg, they only lay one egg. And guess what the incubation rate is? Only 10 days for an echidna to hatch. Now, AB, come. What's your name? Now, Matilda, I'm going to let you have a little pat of an echidna today. But when you pat them, you've got to pat them downwards with a flat hand. There you go. Isn't that cool, Matilda? You find these living right here in this park. Isn't it an amazing place? Thanks for finding lots of habitat today. Give Matilda a big clap. Well done. <laughs> Bring out another <laughs> creature. The next creature. Hello. It's a little wallaby kangaroo. Street in Essendon along the Maribyrnong River. It's about seven that lives near the old, I think it's the old artillery uh, base along the Maribyrnong River. If you get a kayak, Fly up along the Maribyrnong River and you'll see these living along the edges of the Maribyrnong. This little wallaby here, his name is Rocket. Now, don't you think it's... I'm not making this stuff up, guys. All these animals live right along them. This is little Rocket. So, don't you think it's incredible that people are shopping at High Point today, 500 metres away from a High Point shopping centre, these little wallabies still live? Don't you think it's incredible? I think it's amazing. So, this little wallaby, it's called a stink wallaby or a swamp wallaby. The only true wallaby. He's very stinky, believe me. He lives on my couch at my house. Now, this little wallaby, I need someone to have a touch and hold off today. Now, he's in a pouch because this reminds him of his mother's pouch. And now, his mother's still alive, but his mother wasn't particularly 
particularly good and flicked him out of the pouch when she got a fright one night. What's your name? Kira. Kira. Come over here, Kira. Now, this is little Rocket. I have to give him a bottle of milk every four hours. If you think I speak quickly, I do. I was up very early this morning. Lots of cups of coffee to feed me. Don't, you don't want to kiss him, mate, because you can get ringworm, okay? It's happened once before. It's hilarious. Now, good on you, Kira. Give Kira a big clap. Well done. Now, listen, please, boys and girls, can you please walk your dog on the leash? What else can you do with your cats? You can lock them up, slow down in our cars, and especially, especially, put them in a cat enclosure, that's right, but especially creating habitat for organisation with lots of people and freeways and fences, kangaroos, seem to be more common because they're pushed into smaller areas. Now, this is Snoopy. And Snoopy is a western grey kangaroo. Look at these big, quad-hopping feet. Now, Snoopy is very cute. I need someone to help me cuddle a kangaroo. Now, listen. Stop fires. We don't want bush fires. Keep the snakes away. I need someone to come out the front to help me hold Snoopy. Actually, come. I'm actually, if you think my face is a bit red today, I'm allergic to kangaroos. I have to I had to have a clarus on every time I feed a kangaroo. Didn't need to know that, did you? But anyway, what's your name? Give Abigail a big clap. Look like you're having a great time, Abigail. That's it. So guys, all of these animals live right here in Melbourne. And we've got a very important job to look after them, haven't we? Now the next creature coming out, this is now this creature, I guarantee none of you would have seen up close before and held one. I have Victoria's rarest animal, a mountain pygmy possum. One of the rarest. This is critically endangered. You find these around Mount Gotham and Mount Buller. Would you like to see one quickly? His name is Pugsley, and Pugsley's a bit of a fat so He has to be about 80 grams so he can survive the winter. He's one of the true hibernating mammals here in Australia. And I breed these at my zoo. I've got 20 of them at the moment. And Pugsley here, he's been eating his apple for morning tea. This is not a mouse. This is a possum, a mountain pygmy possum. Look at his prehensile tail. Now listen, you might see him, he looks like he's shaking. His heart rate is 220 beats per minute. Small mammals have a fast heart rate. But I need someone to help me hold this little cutie pie today. Very few people get to see these up close and personal. What's your name? Isla, actually come Isla. But guys, maybe one day you might like to work with animals too, like me. What do you think? Become a zoologist? It's hard to get a bank loan, but it's good fun. It's all about money, is it? Now, Isla, clap your hands together and just be really gentle. None of your friends would have seen a mountain picking possum like that before. Look at his long whiskers he's got, the feeling around. Give Isla a little clap. Well done. Thank you. So guys, I'll let you have a... You find them along the Yarra River. But wouldn't it be great if we extended our green corridors through Melbourne, wouldn't it be great if we could invite koalas back to the Yarra River? Now listen, I wonder why everyone was chatting, I thought, well, what have I done wrong? Can't compete with Frankie the male koala. Now listen, when I was a kid, there were hundreds of thousands of koalas. When, at the turn of the century, actually in the 1900s, there was a million koalas. There's less than 80,000 left in Australia. Now, most people think koalas are common, but they're only common in small pockets, small areas. And koalas have disappeared through most of their range. So we need to find, what you've been doing today is creating habitat for koalas. Now, I want everyone to have a pat of Frankie today and pat him on the back, and then I want you to smell your hand. Woo I don't, it smells like a footy locker room. A bit of listamin, a bit of BO. Males stink. They rub their sternum gland onto all the trees where they live and it wards off other male koalas. They're very territorial. Did you hear that didgeridoo sound before? Beautiful sound. Male koalas sound like a bellowing didgeridoo at night time. Wow, 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 wow. And that's them saying, back off, stay out of my place. Now, koalas, how long is that? It's called PAP in scientific terms. PAP, to inoculate themselves with gum leaves. Now listen. They eat a kilogram of gum leaves a day. Viminalis or uh, Wondery, uh, the mana gum. Now, I need someone to come out the front to get a nice selfie with a koala. And I think we might have you at your come. You can all do this in a minute, you won't miss out. Now, what's your name, mate? Thomas, turn around, Thomas, pull your hoodie back, there you go. Now, turn, turn him around the other way, maybe if it's facing. That's it. Good on you, Thomas. Which one's a koala? <laughs> You're all going to be doing this today, tree planting day, so you won't miss out, I guarantee it. We might just put him away quickly, because I'm going to bring out one more special treat. I have some baby emu chicks here today. Aww. Now listen, 
emus back into Melbourne in Victoria. You know what? These emu chicks are 10 days old. And this one's called Geronimo. And these ones actually live in my lounge room. Now I have concrete floors, so I just blow back it out. It gets very messy. But these, these are the second largest bird in the world. They're called a ratite. They're related to ostrich and rears and kiwis. They can't fly, but they can run 60 kilometers per hour. Now you might be thinking, oh, who cares about emus? Why do we need emus? They eat up all the seeds, all the berries on the ground, they poop it out when they walk away, and they drop seeds everywhere over the landscape. Doesn't it make sense? But exactly, every animal has a job to do. Now, little Geronimo here, he's so drop-dead gorgeous. I need someone to come out the front. Now, if you touch him today, can you promise me to be very gentle? Show him a bit of love. Don't hurt him, be very gentle. I think, what's your name? Kate. Kate, out you come, Kate. Now notice this bird has three toes, ostrich only have two. And Kate, just be very, very gentle. That's it, hold it close up to your body if it feels warm. And I've got a special incubator in my car, which keeps these guys on. You got him? Good on you, Kate. Give Kate a big clap, well done, Kate. It's not every day you get to see a little emu chick like this. Now, guys, هسه خلينا نشوف هاي الغراض اللي وزعوها اول شي هاي المكرافة مالتي شاي سكوبينج اب تو بسكين هاي تشيل بيها الوساخة من النهر على ما اظن عندك هنا بعض الغراض والمعلومات هنفرغ هنا نشوف طلوب صغيرون ميدالية أوراق مع المعلومات لزقة تكتب ملاحظات تلزقها معلومات عن الحديقة سمارت جاردن مغناطيس للثلاجة بنوع ال هاي هن ثلاث تقسيمات الزبالة اللي متابعة هنا باستراليا عندك المواد اللي يمكن اعادة تدويرها والتضمن الكرتون والورق البلاستيك القناني بأنواعها إلى آخره المواد اللي تروح بالتمر الصحي واللي هي حفاضات الأطفال إلى آخره والزبالة الخضراء واللي هي الأوراق الأشجار أغصان الحشيش والكمبوست اللي هي بقايا بقايا الطعم اللي انت ممكن تستخدمها ككمبوست في البيت اذا ينفتحن هيك شي نلزقن على الثلاجة واذا نلبطنهن هم ينفتحن كلعبة للأطفال حتى هم يتعلمون وهم يتونسون هنا عندنا 
دليل للمنطقة اللي زرعناها الحي معلومات عن الحيوانات المتواجدة هناك معلومات عن فعاليات اللي واحد يقدر ينضم لها للطواع الخارطة مال الحي هي معلومات كاملة مجموعات واحد يقدر ينضم لها وهذا خلينا نفتح وانا اقول لك هنا هذا التنظيف الممرات المائية هاي ال هذا صن البوكس اكو جفوف اويل سبيل راق وصل ازالة ال التلوث الزيتي او النفطي الى اخره معلومات عامه حارب المواد الكيماويه قضاء على التلوث الكيميائي الزيتي هاي شنطة صغيرة تتخلى بيها أكياس حتى إذا طلعت تتمشى ويا الكلب مالك تتلم ورا يعني الكلب إذا سوى شغلته بالطريق ما لازم تعوفها طلع طلع لك تشيس منها صغير تشيلها تلف الشدة تأخذها وياك حتى تطلبها بالمكان المخصص وهذا ال... هذا التشيس هاي جنطة صغيرة تتلبس بركبة الكلب شوف مضادة للمواد الكيماوية بس اثناء التنظيف وهاي الوصلة اللي هي لازالة التلوث التلوث بذاك زيت بالماء الى اخره جميل جدا مفكرين بكل شيء